Hello, my name is Nairi, this is Fly Little Birds and I've got two adopted sons and today is a bit more of a chatty video about how we're getting on with the additional needs, special needs, whatever you want to call it. Uh, both of our sons have developmental issues, um, our adopted sons. So we have been working on this pathway now with our older son for about a year and a half and finally, yes, finally the paperwork has come through to give him his uh, individual, uh, not his individual, his educational healthcare plan is in place and we now have the unenviable task of looking at the draft copy and going back and saying whether we agree with it, what extras we'd want put in place for him. Going through this process, I don't know what country you're in, but in the UK anyway, it's not been for the faint-hearted and you would think, wouldn't you, that children that have been through what my sons have been through, which is huge would have easy support and access to kind of getting what they need but Tim and I I feel like we're we, we know quite a lot about children's development and we know quite a lot about schools and things we've got five birth children and we have really struggled with this process struggled to know what we're supposed to be doing at each time struggling to know if we're, if we're saying the right thing doing the right thing we've we've really struggled and we felt kind of like sometimes like we're wading through treacle uh, kind of making two steps forward and one step back so um, my oldest son has had lots of assessments and we know we know where he's at, we know what he struggles with and so this plan has come back now saying that uh, this is what he struggles with and this is what the, the, the school environment or education environment is going to need to provide for him. Now the issue with that is uh, first of all, there are hardly any uh, special schools close to us, so he has the right to a place in the special school. There's hardly anything close to us, so the thing, the place that's close to us is attached to his current school, so that's a possibility. Uh, but the next is like half an hour away. Now, if you're in a very big country, half an hour might sound like a drop in the ocean, but when you're in the UK, half an hour away is quite a lot for a child of his age, and he would need to, of course, get on the provided transport, fair enough, to go to a new school. Now we think that that will cause him huge anxiety anyway, like anxiety is one of his things, so we think that will cause him too much anxiety. So we're asking for him to go to this unit attached to the school, but we've been told by the person who is running the unit that there are no spaces and that two people have already been turned away. So yeah. That sucks because actually, what's the point really, you know? What's the point in going through all this if we can't then give him a place right nearby which is gonna be perfect for him really, it's gonna be perfect for him. So I say perfect for him, but actually, we're also supposed to be looking at the options of schools in this period of time. So before the paperwork arrives, we weren't allowed, allowed to go and look at any other schools. So. If you can imagine like you're with your son all the time, he's in mainstream and you don't know whether the specialist schools available are actually the right level for him because you've never been in one. You've never seen what the other children there are like. You've never really seen what they do. This unit that we favour that is full, we ask to go and see when, when children are there and we were told no, we don't, we don't do that. So we don't know how our son, you know, would kind of fit into it because we've not seen any of them. Now we are allowed now to go around and visit all these schools, but bearing in mind they're all t really too far away. We're not really sure that we want to do that. So yeah, we're struggling. Thankfully, we had someone to call about this because I said to my husband, we might think we know what we're doing. I said, but I really don't think we do. I don't, I don't think we have a clue what we're doing. So we phoned someone who kind of is there for advice and she said, look at the look at the form and what they've written, what they say that the educational provision needs to provide and go back with more detail. Go back with, if it says small groups, say, we want it to be no more than if it says providing visual i don't know resources be specific about what you think your son needs so tim and i were like oh this is a bit mind-blowing how do we know how do we know but we went through each of the points and sort of thought well how would this work in practice now in our experience the Senko has been really, really good and knows what our son needs in practice. But when you're talking about a bigger a school with lots more children, older children, then 
actually that happening in the classroom and how that happens in the classroom hasn't been happening and I really don't think even with this this paperwork which is a legal document I don't think it will happen and that's my worry it's not so much that I'm desperate for him to go to a special school I'm desperate to get what he needs and I think even if it's written down he still won't get what he needs so our thinking was if we push for a one-to-one -one worker with him even if that one-to-one -one isn't kind of allocated full time to him then a lot of the things that are in the paperwork that say need to happen so one of the things that it says needs to happen is that the instructions need to be repeated back in simple language after you know the rest of the class have had it so that the teacher knows that he's understood what's required of him and then there's the whole differentiation thing needs to happen in the classroom but a lot of my son's needs are around language he doesn't first grasp what he's been asked to do once he's grasped it he can have a go at it maybe not at the level of the other children but he can have a go at it so a lot of it is taking the time to interpret then instructions and things so our thinking was if we push for a one-to-one -one worker with him at least part-time if not full-time they can interpret all this information for him and then get him on track with his lessons each time and just be around to support him when things go kind of downhill because so i think i will say that my son has definite skills there which can be tapped into but if he feels that he can't do something or he feels he's going to get laughed at or he feels that he hasn't understood from the beginning he will give up quite quickly and I think if he has that significant person I've always said this about both my sons if they've got that person to go to or they've got additional support in the classroom they will do a whole lot better I guess you could say that for a lot of children but definitely with my sons so that's what we're doing we're unpicking it and we're kind of pushing really for this person to be there now what happens if the if all those things get turned down i don't actually know um but my understanding is is that we can push quite hard for what we want because being able to provide what is in that document is a legal requirement and i suppose thinking back to everything we've done we've had loads of assessments on him was it worth going through this to get this legal document I believe it is going to be especially when he gets older I think he will have access maybe to more uh, environments and things which we wouldn't have been able to push for if he didn't have it there so that's my eldest son and then of course we're going to start when I say of course we've been told to start the process with my younger son because he has so many outbursts I'm just trying to imagine how he would be in a workforce or even in an environment where it's not so tightly structured, I think he would really struggle. So it's all about getting these things in place for when the boys get older, especially, not just now. Education, I feel, is just part of their lives. It's not, there's not the whole them. And Tim and I don't want them to feel kind of isolated with us as they get older because, you know, maybe they're going to struggle to get into further education. Maybe they're going to struggle to get into employment and hold any sort of job down. We want them to have their options open. So, guys, that is the headache that we've got, we've gone through. And if you have a child with additional needs, I'm sure if you've started on this journey, you will know exactly what I mean. And uh, trying to get people to listen in the beginning I think was really really hard and now I feel like we're coming at the end at the end of the journey so I'll keep you updated as to what happens with that form in, in draft form what happens when that final form is written and actually what we were able to get in place for him I think you might find that interesting so thank you for watching please subscribe if you haven't and I will link a playlist at the end for you which has sort of similar subjects in thank you